Ubish Dubish. It's everyone's favorite boomer and vintage lens enthusiast. And today we're going to revisit the uh, Tokina SD 11 to 16 f 2.8 IF DX ATF Pro. And it's on the Canon EOS Digital Rebel XTI. But before we do that, I wanted to mention uh, the Pentax uh, K200D. Uh, these are both. Uh, 10 megapixel DSLRs and I was looking at the used prices on these and the Canon XTI in like new or, or uh, excellent plus condition you could get for 50 bucks whereas this bad boy you have to spend like almost $140 and that's just the body that's not with the lens why uh, uh, well this one has an LCD screen which gives you some information it does have a, a more advanced uh, uh, memory, a specially custom image, gives you all these cool things here. But you could sort of do that in this also. Uh, let's see, what else does it have? Uh, that goes back. Let's go to menu. Well, that's mostly normal stuff. Uh, playback setup. Oh, custom settings. It's in the custom settings. Uh, I pointed this out before. That the, the, the claim to fame for the Pentax, this is a K-mount camera, you could slap any K-mount lens on there. From these ultra-modern ones, this is a SMC Pentax DAL, uh, ALWR, and that's like the, one of the newer ones. Uh, all the way back to uh, the manual K-mount lenses. And that's their claim to fame. And there's a wide variety of different focal lengths and apertures from not only uh, Pentax and Takamar, but uh, other third-party uh, uh, manufacturers. Okay, so that's all I wanted to point out. $140 for this? Oh my God, I paid $100 for it. So apparently the prices have gone up. So, uh, but where does this thing shine? This thing shines in its autofocus. The XTI, no matter what AF lens I threw on there, it always functioned. And even the, uh, say I have the 24 millimeter Canon, I, I'm hitting 85% success rate with that bad boy, right? Uh, whereas with this thing, oh my God, the autofocus, nothing works under 28 millimeters at all. Even Pentax lenses, I can't get them to work. You see, this goes down to uh, 16, but that's hit or miss with this. 55 to like 28, yeah, you could do okay. But anything 24, 16, you have trouble. That's because the wide angle lens lenses spoof the autofocus oh they have a confirmation uh, icon and a red square lights up in the middle but uh, even manually focusing uh, it's hard to tell in fact uh, when I manually focus and I could see that the the, uh, the, the ground glass screen is sharp it, it, you go past it before the autofocus uh, uh, recognizes it so uh, it, it does have problems. I don't know why it's such a great camera, except they keep put vintage lenses on it. Is this a vintage lens? It's still in production, but I bought it like 20 years, 10, 15 years ago. I don't know. So that means this is a classic, all right? So uh, now I'm going to put this on some other Canon DSLRs and, and shoot with it. But for now, we're going to look at the XCI. And yeah, the XCI has a little bit of problem with this. I noticed that if I keep tapping the shutter button, even if it finds the focus, it'll move again and it won't go to the exact same spot. And then there's no luck at all trying to focus on the, uh, the screen. This is an optical viewfinder and they have a screen. Even with the magnifier, it'd be tough to uh, hit the focus optically. So you're sort of stuck with the uh, autofocus. And it does this on all wide angle lenses that are less than 24 millimeters. Uh, so that's why you gotta take a couple pictures, make sure you got the depth of field, uh, look at the uh, your, your, your uh, distance scale, and make sure it's something, uh, that's the clutch, right? If you're shooting at infinity, you don't want it to read seven, uh, uh, seven feet, you want it to read infinity. And conversely, you know, you don't want to see any of these numbers unless you are at approximately that distance. So that is a problem on both these cameras. However, uh, you know, uh, 24 millimeters and up, this thing's fine. Sometimes it's a uh, 95%, 85%. Sometimes this thing is like useless. I put like a Pentax uh, uh, A 
uh, came out lenses on this and had nothing but trouble uh, trying to uh, confirm a focus. And it has no live view. This has no live view. So I don't understand why these are so much more expensive. If I was going to go out and buy a 10 megapixel, I'd buy one of these for 50 bucks in excellent condition rather than one of these for like 140 bucks in excellent condition. But that's just my opinion. What can I say? So uh, I went and I found some more city shots. I used to go to the sea a lot with my ex-girlfriend. Uh, you know how it is. She was my activity coordinator and she'd find something for us to do and I would pay for it. <laughs> but you know, that's the way things are in America. And uh, I can't complain. She was good company for 10 years, although we, we drifted apart and you know, I don't see her anymore. But uh, we had a lot of, we will always have Paris or we'll always have New York City. So uh, I took a lot of pictures in the city with this lens and I'm gonna show them to you. And I processed them. How did I process them? I processed them. Uh, I shrunk them. I cropped them 16 by 9 to fit your screen. I shrunk them down to uh, 1920 by 1080. Uh, I may have adjusted the, uh, the levels, like uh, the highlights or the shadows. And I sharpened a lot of them too, but very judiciously and minimally. I didn't go overboard on it. Uh, so it is only a 10 megapixel. But it took good pictures. It took really good pictures. I like the look of this lens with this camera. It was excellent. So uh, it had that going for it. So uh, let's jump right into uh, the pictures. And uh, you tell me what you think. Now remember, you could get this used for 200 bucks in that's a condition. You could get this used for 50 bucks. I mean, if you want to go cheap with uh, uh, getting into photography, you can't do... Uh, much better than that. One big difference between the, the Canon and the Pentax is this has a compact flash which is a, a perfect size for my big fat American sausage fingers whereas uh, Pentax they were early op adopter of the SD card. So, ah, Look how hard it is to get these damn things out. I hate this. You know, the door's in the way, you got big sausage fingers, you can't get it out. Oh, I gotta push it in. Ah. 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 Since it doesn't do movies, uh, an old uh, four gigabyte uh, number two card is adequate for this. <laughs> so, all right. There we go. Let's look at some pictures. This series of pictures is in New York City. But we're looking at New York along uh, the Delaware River and at Strauss, Pennsylvania. And it's a little further away, uh, New Jersey. And it's like the three corners, supposedly. And this is Matamoros. Matamoros is in Pennsylvania. And they got this erector set bridge, which I found fascinating. It's like totally old school, with all sorts of uh, uh, flanges and cross members and bolts and it's all rusty because they don't want to paint it so it's a pretty cool and it's a good way to check out a, a, a wide-angle lens a super wide-angle lens and I think these pictures came out pretty decent looking I mean I could have showed you just three pictures and said this is a good lens go look at it no I'm gonna show you a whole bunch of pictures under uh, different lighting conditions and it, this way you could tell yeah this thing seems to have some consistent a picture taking quality to it maybe I should get one or maybe I won't get one that's up to you this picture I left uh, perfectly uh, for, uh, horizontal without rotating just so I could show the, the detail <laughs> but it's interesting it's like this weird bridge uh, apparently the previous bridges all got washed away from big floods can you imagine that uh, bridges get washed away from big floods and maybe they don't want to fix this one because it's going to wash away in a big flood I don't know but it's like a main bridge to cross the river to get from like uh, New York, New Jersey to Pennsylvania. So well, what are they thinking? Who knows what the government thinks? No one asks me what the government, the government doesn't ask me what I think so, you know. Now, uh, I, I copied and pasted the EXIF data from each picture, each JPEG into the picture. And then you can see what date I took it on, what time it was, I was using the XTI, you know, what the shutter speed is, the ISO, uh, what the F number was. So you could get a feel what this lens does. Uh, did I adjust these pictures? 
uh, a little bit. Yeah, I, I sharpened them all because uh, for some reason uh, it wasn't hitting the precise focus. And, you know, that bothered me when I bought a $500 lens and uh, it wasn't focusing exact. Sometimes it would, but sometimes it wouldn't. So it was like, uh, uh, sh you know, a short focal length, you stop down, you get a lot of depth of field. But still, uh, it was the, the, the way the camera autofocused. It was an early type autofocus. There's two different types of autofocus. And I think it had less uh, uh, points. Uh, here we are now, we're in the city now. This is Columbus Circle. Well, I went there uh, with my girlfriend at the time, uh, right before Christmas, and we walked around. And this is from 202012. So just look at the complexion of the people in these pictures and tell me what you think. I won't say anything. You have to draw your own conclusions. Now, this is all brand new. They just built this, and it all looked brand new. It was all spiffy looking. And, uh, well, this was uh, always there from previously, this uh, uh, globe. Uh, but uh, Columbus Circle used to be like a dumpy place, and they sort of fixed it up and made it real nice looking. And, you know, it, it was the, the lighting was perfect. It was late December afternoon, and this had that look to it. And there is a circle there in front of the building, and everyone drives around a circle like these fire trucks. And they had these, uh, uh, they weren't sculptures. They looked like they were cast concrete or something. This lens has this look that I really like. It's great for architecture and being in a city, although I was in the city, which is New York City. So uh, this isn't sculpture. This looks like just cast concrete or something. No, I'm not knocking that. And these are like the Christmas uh, festival uh, booths where people were selling uh, uh, gifts or presents. And when you're in the city, you have to deal with people. So, you know, I included the people in my pictures, you know, shots of crowds and stuff, and cars, you got to do cars. Torno, Torno's everywhere. I guess I got one in Midtown, one uptown, one on the west side, one on the east side. This is inside the mall. Uh, well, Columbus Circle is basically a shopping mall. And they hang these uh, big star things up. And this thing is so great for capturing... Oh, here's Ralph Cramden. Uh, this thing is so great for capturing these tight spots. Now, here I am. This is in uh, a couple months later, in 2013, in uh, April. And then uh, you walk around the city, look in the windows, uh, see, see how people have display their their uh, their notions and everything. And then you just walk up and down the avenues and look around. Of course, uh, we were tourists. We went there to be tourists. And the city is the city. It's this massive architecture. Hey, liberty for you, huh? Buy a plastic liberty. Get some liberty, huh? But it's just that they got these massive buildings. They're all over, you know? And uh, there are these uh, giant uh, steel and glass uh, monstrosities with the uh, older ornate buildings. And so it's a whole, whole mixture of architecture and styles and timelines. And uh, I don't know, this is a big movie, Defiance. I don't remember that from 2013 to you. I have the faintest idea what that's all about. You know, you go there and sometimes in the afternoon and it could be partly cloudy and everything looks yellowish. Then you go there somewhat earlier and then everything has this bright blue uh, mist to it. So this is the Macy's Flower Show. My girlfriend, she was my activity coordinator. She said, oh, we're going to do this. So I said, yeah, sure, fine. We did that. We drove to uh, uh, the New York Waterway uh, Ferry Terminal and we took that over. And we took your jitney to close to where this was and then... Um, we went, oh, it took us a half hour to get inside, which wasn't too bad. And this is the Macy's Flower Show, 2013. I'm doing this in 2023, so that was 10 years ago. If you didn't go, you had no idea what it was like. So I tried to show you one picture. No, I'm going to show you a bunch of pictures so you get the whole feel and ambiance of what a Macy's Flower Show in New York City was all about. I thought it was pretty cool. I liked it. Now, I noticed uh, uh, I was using the flash through all these. 
and I had that stupid pedal hood on it, and it was just blocking uh, the flash a little bit. So after this expedition, I just took the pedal hood off, and I never used it again. I mean, does it? It suffers from flare, or uh, but you know the pedal hood doesn't help. So what's the sense? You know, and it's interesting flare. It's like J.J. Abrams flare, like in the, his Star Trek movie. You know, it's, so uh, it was artistic in a way. I don't remember if it was free or we had to get tickets or the tickets were free, but you still had to get tickets to get in. I don't remember because it was a long time ago, but uh, there's a pretty good crowd there. And we're all like, you know, rummaging around and maybe you had to wait for uh, the fast crowd to move out of the way to get a picture. And, you know, it was a series of these uh, uh, tents or buildings and they had like a, a sort of a Far Eastern Indian look to it. You know, because look, they had elephants in Ganesh. I think that's the one elephant god. And then they just had the, the way it was painted and the archways and everything. But it was really cool. I really liked it. And, uh, you know, what are you going to do on a, uh, some April day? You know, you go to the city. And, the, the, you know, it was interesting. I felt safe when I went there. Uh, I didn't feel like I was going to be tall chopped or knived. I didn't feel like I was going to be uh, have my uh, possible stolen from me or my girlfriend was going to be raped in front of my face. I didn't feel like that. This is all during Rudy Giuliani and Mike Bloomberg. They knew how to run a city and keep it safe. And, uh, you know, nowadays I don't go to the city anymore. And so, I sure, I'm glad I went. I'm glad I went and did all these cool things. Now maybe I'm an old... Uh, white boomer and I'm just afraid of, uh, you know, uh, the, our new society, how it's turning out. So these were all real flowers. They were all real. Nothing was fake. Everything was real. The flowers were all real. And uh, it was just like this whole stuff that just threw at you all over. And it was like really neat. I really liked it. It took half hour to get in and maybe it took longer than a half hour to get through it. That's for sure. I highly recommend it. Uh, I don't know if Macy's and other cities do that, or I don't even know if Macy's is still in business. This is the Tokina, 11 to 16 millimeter f 2.8, and it's a fantastic lens. Fantastic lens. Of course, I upgraded to other uh, Canon EOS digitals like the T1i, and I slapped this lens on it, and I did a special photo shoot just compare it and I have to say that the only thing holding this lens back was the camera itself the XTI but I mean the colors were nice and rich and vibrant uh, you know it's uh, it just had a nice look to it without a doubt and if you pick a, a, a like new one up or in excellent condition for 200 bucks get one so they had this phony bazaar at the end, you walk through a local sort of flowers, and then they had like these stalls, like it was an actual bazaar. Maybe you were supposed to be in Casablanca or uh, Caramish or someplace. And, uh, but it was roped off because I figure it's New York City. People would uh, probably shoplift the, the stuff on display. <laughs> New York City. <laughs> Although everyone was well behaved and pleasant, and I didn't hear any gunshots or anything and uh, or screaming or anything so that was good but they did a really good job i liked it so this is the flower show is over we stepped outside victoria's secrets was right across the street and they were putting up a big giant crane so the serendipitously i was able to take some uh, uh pictures of strange things and it looked to me like the roadway was raised here or something i didn't understand what that was all about uh, I'd have to look into that and see what it's all about. You know, it was like 10 years ago. I don't remember what it was all about. Now, what I did was a lot of these pictures, I just stuck a 16 by 9 crop into the 3 by 2 format as it comes out of the camera, cropped it, and then I shrunk it down to the screen. But some of them, I did do an extra crop, like a magnifying crop. When you walk in a city, they got these uh, lattices all over where, they, where they're, you know, they're fixing a the building and they want to make sure that bricks don't fall on top of you. They have these weird statues all over. Some are commercial, like for stores, and then they have like churches who have 
picture of a patron out. Now these yellow ribbons were, had the names of soldiers on them, I believe. And this is in front of a church. So that's the significance and context of that. But the city is the city that gets these big giant skyscrapers all over it. In between you'll see some smaller buildings that are maybe five stories and their days are numbered because they're gonna that space is gonna be so come so valuable, they're gonna rip them down and put up more skyscrapers. So I tried to get picture shots because you're in a city and it's full of people. And uh, I, uh, you know, I, I try to keep everyone anonymous as possible. Just as long as you don't zoom up on a person. I mean, you don't have any expectation of privacy when you're in the streets of New York City. There's the Empire State Building. Here's an ornate building. Uh, this is the extra crop, so I want to zoom up on the detail. And this lens held up. You could do that. It's a 16 uh, uh, to 11 zoom, and you could crop it and zoom, still zoom up. You're getting a lot of distortion of perspective, right? Parallel lines meet at infinity. But it did seem to have some complex distortion on top of that. It wasn't pincushion. It wasn't barrel. It was complex. Plus, if you weren't per perfectly perpendicular or parallel to your subject, it's just going to introduce this distortion. And, I mean, it, it exaggerates everything. But that gives it a different look. Now this uh, white thing in the middle was a camera obscure. It was like a drum. I put a hole in it. The hole projected an image on the inside of the drum. That's what that was. And there was always, when you go to the city, you always see these sculptures. People put up a sculpture, it's there for six months and then it's gone. This sculpture was called the bird and it's made out of uh, nails. These nails uh, are made, they, nobody buys a a hundred penny nail or a thousand penny nail. These these are pieces of uh, iron or plastic and they were cut to look like big nails. And there's a whole bunch of crowds of people there just scoping it out and everything. This is around the, the flat iron district too. This is the back end view. Everyone was looking at a front of the bird. I was the only one uh, who looked at the back end view. And there's the flat iron building right there. And there's the bird in the, the center, lower center there. Here's the, the clock, the golden clock, the flat iron building. It's this interesting place to go and walk around. Uh, this is a crop. This is a magnified crop view. So this lens has enough reserve that you do that. And you always get these shadows, you know, over fence railing, trees, uh, churches all over. Uh, you know, it's a lot of photo ops there, a lot of photo ops. And you know, never know how things are going to change or how uh, the field of view is going to be restricted in the future. Like here is an empty lot and someone put up a flea market there. So me and a girlfriend walked in and we went to see what was on sale. We didn't buy anything, we just went to look. And of course there were some pictures there to take. There's always pictures to take in the city. Uh, I, I don't feel safe. Maybe if I, uh, I knew some ex-marine, uh, you know, who knew how to handle himself, and I would go with him as my bodyguard, I think, you know. And it handles really well from the far shots to the near shots. And if you're looking at the EXIF data, you can see mostly I use it at 16 millimeters or at 11 millimeters. And rarely do I use it at 14 or 13 or 12. I don't uh, or 15. You may see it once in a while. But, you know, here's the lot. This lot is next to the church. Eventually, maybe the church is a church property. You're going to sell it because they're going to get a Brazilian dollars for it. And they'll put up a building, and you'll never be able to get that view again. This is the size of stuff, like brooches they were selling. So I thought it was all very interesting. And since so 13 years ago, I imagine these were all sold, or the ones that weren't sold are uh, put in a scrap barrel or something. And here's the strange stuff that they're selling. Yeah, the figurines, some of them look like uh, like they're not very woke, huh? Although I want to get, would like to get one of those piggy banks with wings. So this is Fifth Avenue, I believe, I think so. And they shut Fifth Avenue off and they had some street fair there. And everyone was walking up and down. You still had to stop for cross traffic, but no one could go up this road. Here's, here's some uh, uh, people, uh, I guess they were cosplaying or something. 
And the lighting is strange in the city because the light reflects and refracts of all the windows and then it hits the streets and it's all very strange. Bongo. What was that all about? That must have been a big thing. Now this is the, where uh, the Metropolitan Museum of Art is. And there's Cleopatra's Needle. It's this uh, actual obelisk taken from Egypt in the 1800s. They shipped it over and they put it up. And I, uh, this is the second time I've been there. And uh, they actually have this object from Egypt in Central Park. This is Central Park too. And they had this castle there. You walk in the castle, they have a fake tree and a couple stuffed birds. <laughs> and then we went up on top of the castle, and then we looked uh, at the park and the skyline around the park. Pleasant spring day. Look, there's no crowds there. There's nobody there. It was a little cool, and we were there early. And then that's the best time to get in the city early and get out before it gets too crowded. Because sometimes I guess the, the crowds are just so massive. It's like... Uh, unbelievable but then the city quieted down after 9-11 here's a close-up of a stuffed bird and then people stayed away for a while and even though this is like 10 years later look at here's central park there's no one in central park look just a, all the paths are empty that's my ex there in front of me the forsythias were in bloom and it's just as this pleasant beautiful may morning i couldn't believe it felt totally safe you know now they have stuff every day in the news some kid gets killed in not this part but some other park at 6 30 in the afternoon you're talking in june the sun is still up and it's bright a woman gets raped by a homeless guy but she beats him off uh, there's always crazy stuff like that happening somebody gets run over hit and run it's horrible and uh you know every time you go to the city you take your chances uh, I would like to explore the city more, but now I go to other cities where I feel safer. Smaller cities, you know, there aren't, uh, shall we say, too much diversified yet. Well, I have the old saying, fat of a feather flocks together. So I'm sort of a fat old boomer. And I guess I should flock together with others of my type. <laughs> So I don't know if I'll ever get back to the city again. I don't know if I'll ever go back to Central Park. I don't know. So I'm glad I went there and I took these pictures and I could share them with you. So do I have uh, concerns and fears about it? Yes, I do. Are they unfounded or am I uh, being uh, absolutely uh, you know, uh, <laughs> reasonable? I can't say. I cannot say. But... Uh, I, this is a time and a place, and it worked out really good. And I had a lens and a camera, and they did a splendid job. Colorful, uh, nice uh, tonal range. Oh, they had this uh, botanical garden there, and uh, the tulips just happened to be in bloom there. So that was uh, fascinating, too. You know, we didn't know this was happening. And this is the, week, the weekend after the Macy's Flower Show. So I'm not going to see it anymore. This is some place down in Hackensack, some mall, and you can go look at the river there. And now, now uh, this is uh, the New York Waterway Ferry Terminal on the city side, and uh, we did our evening walk, and uh, we were coming back. And this is uh, now. This is I'm jumping uh, the years or back to 2012 in September. This is a really neat picture because I was on the ferry. We are going back to Jersey. And I just leaned up against the side of the ferry and I snapped off a couple shots. Look at one third of a second. You know, cool. And here's a perfect example. that this that There's probably put some building there and you can't get that view anymore. So that's why I always go to you know, towns. I take pictures of things. Towns are always under construction. This movement happened from the ferry. I just linked up against uh, the cabin of the ferry and I snapped away for 1.6 seconds and as the ferry was moving it traced out the, uh, that pattern of the skyline. You know, downtown in the financial district is pretty cool and on weekends when uh, all the money changers aren't there it's pretty quiet and there's so many lights in the city 
it never really gets dark. And if there happens to be clouds at night, they can all get lit up and everything. And you know, look, I was there at 10 o'clock at night and I felt safe with my girlfriend. She had her camera, I had my camera. You know, those were the good old days, you know, uh, Rudy and Bloomy. Maybe they were tough on the bad guys, but maybe that's what you have to do. This is Trinity Church. I think this is the West Side Drive. And we're walking up back to catch the ferry. I think this was the Javits Center. 